Um, I'd like to point out one thing that Vitaly said earlier, which um, is that it's not necessarily a social media strategy. It's really about a communications plan and uh, putting a message out there that helps kind of create engagement and generate relationships and also maintain those relationships. Um, uh, putting a message out there that helps kind of create engagement and generate relationships and also maintain those relationships. Um, and instead of thinking of, oh, we've got to get 1,200 followers here, 1,200 followers there, just for our one water campaign or buildings campaign or people campaign to happen, instead we want to figure out a way to create a unified approach through the, the, the website and, and these guidelines here so that the message can kind of be aggregated together and you can create this kind of whole arc and this whole kind of character, so to speak, um, that is the, the sustainability initiative at Cornell. Um, and to that end, the idea is um, you want to actually create this unified voice. And so these guidelines are going to help you kind of create this unified, unified voice. And the reason I'm saying that is you want to be thinking like you're this character in a play. Um, when you're gathering content and figuring out, okay, I want to make a post about what I'm doing. And so that across all the teams, when the message is being put together and being shared with the, the core CSE team to go to the blog, to go to the social media channels, they're hearing the same character over and over again. And uh, the character that we chose is the, the Dalai Lama. Um, you know, if you think about it, he, he looks across various disciplines, uh, theories in life, religion, science, you name it, and he, cry, and he tries to create a unified approach. And he has a lot of humility about it. Um, and at the same time, he's constantly introspective about it. He's looking at the different factors going on, and he's able to really engage people, and he speaks all over the place, all the world, in, in many different types of talks and things, and he has this uh, disarming candor, I think is the, the phrase they use for it. So we wanted to figure out a process in that that you can actually create that character with what all the teams are doing. And, and in that way, people can start recognizing this voice, this, this character coming out of the sustainabil sustainability initiative at Cornell. And so the structure that we have for you is a way to not invent a new structure to do that, but to use the, the SMART goals and the SMART objectives that you have as the, the, the kind of structure that ties it all together um, and the kind of filter that you place up if you're saying, okay, I need to gather this information, or I'm writing this story, or I want to post you know, about this event going on, um, that your, your usage guidelines, I mean your SMART objectives, is like the foundational structure between the work you're doing and also the usage guidelines for social media. I'm sorry to interrupt. I need yeah. to ask a question of clarification. Almost everybody in here is brand new in terms of the student um, social media coordinators. Okay. And have any of them seen SMART goals yet or know what that process is? Oh yeah, I can give you a quick rundown of SMART goals. So um, SMART is a SMART goals is a or SMART objectives I should say is a is a planning process so that you can um, create more specific specificity, accuracy, and ways to work on accomplishing the goals that you're setting out to accomplish. So SMART translates to specific, measurable, attainable, um, and there's argument about the R, either relevant or um, recorded, um, and finally time-driven. And some people even say SMARTs, so the last S being strategy, so we can just kind of say our user guidelines is the strategy part. Um, but that's basically what SMART goals is. And so, um, there's a structure in place where they kind of map out, all right, what are the specific things we want to accomplish? How can we, um, how can we measure that we've actually accomplished it? Is it realistic within the time frame that we're going to be working on it? You know, what time frame are we giving to it? How many different steps along the way can we use to check back and see how we're doing? Um, and is it relevant to the overall mission of our team, um, of our, you know, our, our, our core purpose? And the coach said that um, the rest of your teams are in their afternoon sessions today working on this SMART objectives for the, the year coming up. So each team has its own set of yeah. um, objectives that they will be able to share with you. So when you, when you create these SMART objectives, and you, uh, you're essentially creating the creating whole structure of not only the work you're doing, but with the usage guidelines that we have for you, the communications plan that you can do um, when you're creating messages. 
And the reason that we wanted to do that is we don't need to add all these extra things you have to work on. Instead, use the, the timing horizon that you created on a particular objective as also your communication schedule. So if you're gearing up for some sort of campaign event or, or something that's going to actually happen on a certain day, you can actually use that to create a, a communications calendar and structure your message based off of that. Um, the other reason is that th there are interesting elements like tactics to influence behaviors on the smart objectives. So you can start kind of breaking these smart objectives down and say, okay, can I pull an interest out of that tactic? Like um, water usage, how long I'm in the shower. Can I pull uh, an accomplishment out of it? Like, um, you know, the, using the sensors on the lights and we drop power by this much. Um, all of those things are elements of creating a whole story arc. So your smart objectives can basically become the outline or like, you know, <laughs> setting the stage for writing a whole story arc that you're doing over the, the whole timeline that you have while you're working on your various objectives with your team. Um, so also what it does is it helps you figure out, okay, what are the attributes of the people that I'm t um, talking to? You know, what, what is my audience? If you're trying to influence student behavior, it's a student audience, and you can figure out, based off of the content landscape and some other information that the CSC team has, all right, what are the best ways to reach the students? Probably Facebook, Twitter, um, staff and faculty, maybe newsletters, email, you know, depending on which ones, it, it kind of helps you figure out, you know, where the message is going and how it's going to be channeled. Um, and that will help you kind of figure out, all right, what am I really trying to say? Um, what else about the SMART objectives? Well, outside of that, I think um, also you want to think about what kind of message are you creating. Um, one thing you really do want to do, and this is actually building on the SMART objectives too, is you want to be as clear and concise as possible. Um, whenever you're, you're putting together something that's going to become a blog post or some sort of message that's going to be shared, you want to get it to as short and as easily digestible as you can. If you can do that, then someone else can just as easily repeat it and remember it and recall it. And so you, you really want to make sure that you're kind of satisfying that simple, clear, digestible, because that's the way that it then is received by other people. Um, and the only reason then, if you would want to make a larger sort of story or a larger sort of post, if it's, if it's a really rich thing, um, something that you know kind of covers this whole, you know, uh, dicey story that had its you know ups and downs and it's the kind of the epic drama sort of thing that's when you want the longer story um, but just by the nature of the of making something big like that you know it's not going to happen very often and more and and you even if you are making something big like that you want to have it starting in something that's easily digestible something you can maybe share in real time and you can start building the message over time um, and that's another reason why you want to use the smart objectives because they show kind of the points of progression, the milestones that you're going to be attaining while you're trying to reach the overall objectives. You can create these check-in points, and each of these check-in points in terms of how am I doing on the objectives is another chance to, to share that experience through the social media channels and, and through the blog. To say, hey, this is the setback that we just had, or this is the great experience that we just had. You know, what do you think? Things along those lines. Um, so that's kind of the telling of the story. That's the sharing point. The other side that we want to get you familiar with is how do you reinforce uh, your communications? And how do you really kind of engage with your audience? And this is the, the kind of the really big area that a lot of people who talk against social media and, and communication strategy that you know is not like the typical communication strategy is what they don't do. Because uh, they say, you know, social media doesn't work, there's no real return. And what they don't do is they don't follow up. With any sort of communications that you have, and any sort of story that you create, you, the, the most important thing that you can do is spend as much time working on some sort of follow-up as you are putting into the initial story or communications to begin with. So, if you're creating some sort of schedule, like I want to make sure that my team is able to put together one one, even if it's a really small post a week, the amount of time that you're putting in gathering the information 
and writing the content and, and interacting with the interacting with the CSC team and then getting it out there for you. You want to spend just that same amount of time following up on it. And what do I mean by that? I mean finding out wherever the post clearing house for the information, but then it'll go to the Facebook page, it'll go to the Twitter account. Um, it might come out in a newsletter. Um, however it comes out, you want to um, plan to follow up with it and see if, um, you know, see who responded to it, see who liked it. Um, see if you can get one of the other people who are in your team to share that post um, so that they're putting on their personal account. Um, you can ask friends to do some, uh, like let's say someone helped you out in uh, one particular campaign event. Your follow-up on telling people about that campaign event and that experience could be asking your friends to do what I like to call horn tuning, which is basically <laughs> saying uh, they're sharing the, the post and, and the experience about it, and they're saying, hey, I was there. Like, I helped make this happen. It was really great, and we got this out of it. Um, that sort of thing where, again, it's, it's talking about experience, and it's helping share a story. These are the things that people like to engage with. They don't actually really like to engage with like the whatever it was itself. Like this event happened, cool. You know that's not really what people people say. People say this event happened, and you know we really wanted to address this this big challenge that was going on. This is what we worked on. This is the setback that we had, and we got this out of it. That's much more kind of um, approachable. There's one thing I just want to add in here, which is that if you think about you think about the, the together, whatever it is that you're putting out there, think of it in terms of like the whole life cycle of that information. So you might think like blog entry is done, done with the work. Um, think of the work as being like until the final comment on you know on the Facebook feed or the final retweeting is done. Like that's the whole life cycle of the information. So what you might want to be thinking about when you are writing a blog article is who would be a good person to contact before the blog article is posted to ask them if they'd be interested in rebroadcasting my information. Because you can actually do a little bit of coordination with friends or other departments saying, you know, we're going to be posting this blog article on Wednesday morning. We're really hoping to, for it to be the beginning of this new campaign. Would you be willing to, you know, would you be willing to repost it? Another or thing you can put in a newsletter, or put in or newsletter what, whatever, whatever they use, whatever their strategy is, you can actually kind of enroll your your colleagues in, in helping you broadcast the information. The other piece is um, when the blog post is posted, you could also be thinking about what's the first comment you want to put in a comment thread, so you can actually start a discussion because you know. Uh, Posts that are on Facebook that have comments on it generally garner more comments, right? If no one's commenting on it, no one's going to say anything. But you might think about your blog post as being the post, and then some controversial or at least interesting, you know, uh, comment that you're going to put on the post in order to create, you know, a lively discussion. So just in the vein of yeah. like needing the listening and follow-up before you even post it, so you can make sure that your content gets that much more, um, you know, visibility and um, engagement. Yeah, and, and in that vein, um, with follow-up, you want to have this kind of thank you approach to it. Um, so when you follow up, if you see that people are commenting on things, even if they say something that's kind of racy, or they say, well, yeah, but I, you know, I think that um, the fact that you stopped that bike lane at this point on campus is really dangerous. That's when it gets uphill. You know, someone actually did make a comment about that. Um, that's not a negative thing, that's a really great opportunity, um, you know, because one, that person said something that's really meaningful. So uh, a way to, to, to give the idea that you want to uh, engage with people and you want to create relationships is to follow up with that and thank them. And say, you know, thank you, that's a really great point. You know, uh, you may not have an answer to it. Just be honest, we don't have an answer to that. That's a, you know, that's a difficult topic. Um, so uh, a way to, to to give the idea that you want to uh, engage with people and you want to create relationships is to follow up with that and thank them and say, you know, thank you, that's a really great point. You know, uh, you may not have an answer to it. Just be honest, we don't have an answer to that. That's a, you know, that's a difficult topic. Um, but if you can actually look at it and give them a response, you, you say it. You know, I want to give you a response. And so that the follow-up is really that giving attitude, that thank you attitude. And if someone is really being a rock star and you see them kind of reposting, or even if it's someone in your team or you yourself, um, again, either you're tooting your own horn and saying, you know, like, I feel really great about what's happened here, like, thanks everyone for following up with me, all those sorts of things. You can do that. Um, and the more you do that,